fine. Oh, wait. Nope, that's no good. Yeah, she's folded up pretty good, bud. Hey, I got all the faith in the world that you can fix this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely seen better days. What do we have here, Matthew? Uh, you might have missed it. I ran into the back of Mike. No! <laughs> I didn't miss it. Dude. I've watched it 17 times. Because you guys may hilarious. have missed it, but I jacked the brakes in front of Matt and he collided with me. <laughs> so, Mike, I gotta ask you a question. What were you thinking going into that hole? Apparently, there? I didn't want to get wet and the brain just shut off. Yeah. And the brakes went on. Oh, yeah. I've had that happen to me before. The last time was at River Ranch and then I wound up on UTV fails and then I got banned from River Ranch for life. So for life. I, I've been there. Man. I've been there. I hope I don't end up there. <laughs> it ended I'll up get just, banned from St. Helen Trails yeah, it just, for life. <laughs> it ended up being a series of events that just all came together to make a bad situation. But how do you fix a bad situation? By just fixing it. By just fixing the machine. So, so give us a rundown. What exactly happened? <clears throat> so as far as repair or as far as damages? Or, well, I guess if you hey, want to just talk us through step by step about know, oh, what happened. If we should live in the past or not. I'd like well, to just hear what I, happened. I do right. I do wanna I do wanna show the clip <laughs> okay. right now. Okay. You guys can watch the full video in the description. Yeah. There'll be a link uh -huh. uh, that's pretty darn good video. Yeah. So anyway, this video is about repairing the damages that happened yeah. to this. And uh, the main thing is the lower control arm on this side. She got a little, she got a little full. We've winner. seen this before, you know? Yeah, that's uh, pretty much a built-in weak link yeah. on an X3. And it basically, I'm hoping it saved everything else right. because I've got a decent used control arm here. It's, you know, it's got some scratches. I mean, with one or two rides, that's what they're all gonna look like. But it's yeah. not bad. So, that's good. Uh, my lights, unfortunately. Yeah, this is the real kicker took here. Took a bit of a beating. The lens got scratched, but it's not cracked. I so, mean, these are what they use in freaking desert racing. They're tough. Yeah, they're actual made for, Baja lights. Yeah. They're designed for Baja, Baja this is designs. the un Baja part right there. But that was because of un other If you look closely, you can see this nice line, and we're almost sure that's my radius it rod says, hitting the front of that light. Polaris! <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, if only I could see what this light saw. That, uh, yeah. that would be crazy. Anyway, yeah, that's listen, I saw what I saw in my rearview mirror, and I'm sure that light saw the same thing, and it was bad. And then the other major damage, you know, the light pushed into this front end, which then pushed into the radiator, putting a hole in the radiator. Yeah, that's but a kicker. I've got a new radiator there, mm -hmm. and this video is just to show you guys how to do all of that stuff. Turns so. out, yeah, this is more common than you think. I feel like we've gone through a lot of radiators on X3s. It's not, uh, yeah, it's I've, not done, a, I've done this repair probably a hundred times yeah. <laughs> by now, yeah. so. Uh, but we've never really showed a detailed look, so stick around. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I will. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about going anywhere today. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Maybe stick around with a little cheesy. <laughs> so, anyway. Thanks. Hey, come hang out it. with us. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't cheesy. Come we on. just are programmed to make fun of things yeah. at all times. Yeah. So, really sorry. <laughs> come along for the ride. Okay, bud. <laughs> all right, Matt. It's not actually easy. Matt. What else isn't easy is taking the front end off an X3. Yeah, I know they're, that's they're right. They're built kind of weird. Yeah. And if you try to take each individual piece off, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. So the goal is to take the whole hood and everything off as one piece. I said it like an El Camino. Matt, like an El Camino. Matt didn't I, agree with that. But, uh, but uh, anyway, first things first, the hood just pops off. That's probably the easiest thing. <laughs> so behind here, you've got Two T30s mm -hmm. that have to come out. Yep. And then on either side, you've got a T30 here yep. with a 10 millimeter nut on the back side. You've got two T30s here and here. You have to undo the headlight. That's an eight millimeter bolt. And those two plugs, mm -hmm. if you can see them, 
Uh, and that's, oh wait, nope. There's one more. One more. So hidden behind here. Oof. And you're really gonna find out where you missed when you were cleaning your machine, there's a bolt here. Nope. And on the other side, that's just exposed. So take all those out. And then you've got a clip. Will you be able to get in there? It popped out on this side, so we'll have to go to the other can side. Can you point where it's at? Right there. No it's supposed fooling. to be a clip, no. if you can see that. But on the other side, there is a clip right there. Yep. That I don't know why Can Am does this. They don't use these clips correctly, like you typically would see on a car or any other automotive application. They're actually in like backwards. So it, if you go to do this job, you'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm. But basically, you gotta rip this clip right off, and then the whole thing comes off. So let's get to it. Man, it's like you've done this a time or two, right? <sighs> time or two. <laughs> One and out, power it out. I was so anti power tools before I started Until. working here. <laughs> and then Matt and Doug would just yell at me for not using power tools. Uh huh. This is a really long one here. Wow. Big girl. Otherwise, other than that one, every single bolt is the same length. So you don't really got to worry about it. Just pay attention to the ones that have This is also washers behind another it. technique too, okay? I've never been an X3-man, I don't know, but I've seen enough of them where this is a, a great way to get to your radiator to clean it because they sure like clogging. Yeah, even if there's nothing wrong with your X3, taking this off is really the only way to thoroughly clean your radiator. So if you're having overheating issues or whatever, it's pretty much what you yeah, need to do. I've seen that a lot in the past. There's not really much space right here to do like thorough cleaning. Oh, ah. Uh, a little scrapage, no big deal. You gotta break those bolts in, you know what I'm saying, bud? All right, that's the main stuff. Oh, no. Don't forget your headlights. There's two more over here, which leads me to I've got this TMW bumper on here. Really nice bumper. And what's cool about it is it's a two-piece design, which makes getting the hood off way easier than with, well, I guess like the XRS bumper, it's pretty easy. But if you have the stock XRC bumper, it goes up into this grill area. Mm -hmm. It makes it really tough to get that hood out. But this TMW bumper, you'll see there's four bolts on the side, two underneath, and then this half comes off and everything else comes out a lot easier. Whoa. TMW. Look at that lift. Man, a lot of people ask about the brand of the, or the manufacturer of those lifts. Do you know what they are? I don't. I think they're all different because yeah. we just got a good guy deal yep. on them from a good guy who got them from another good guy. They showed up one day. We paid a little bit of money for them. They came from everywhere all at once at the same time. It's impossible, I know, but that's what happened. So, yeah, everyone that's asking, I, you know, it's not no. that I'm ignoring you. I just, I have no idea. No idea. Yeah. No clue. I don't know. Random. A lot of them don't even have stickers. Pull some more winch line out. This is the last bolt. And I don't think this thing bent in the collision. I think the lights unfortunately took the, the brunt of the impact. Yeah. The lights in that one tire. So now that comes right off. I mean, those are tough lights. Now it looks like and now it's wide open. The predator's face. Ooh. <laughs> You got these two at the bottom. See and those do have washers. So the headlights will stay with this whole assembly uh -huh. when you take it off. So it's hard to see, easy to miss, but there's a bolt back here you take out. Just a little tiny bolt. Okay. I can get it out. Mm -hmm. This little guy. Yep. 
and then this adjuster will come out of its socket uh -huh. and but the wiring and everything will stay with the car Those. Those are for the ambers down there. I wouldn't be surprised if the fan broke, but it still spins. Yeah. But it's so the it's the shroud you gotta worry about. The not shrouds, the you know, again from just previous knowledge, don't seem to be the most tough things. They like to click clack whenever they can. Oh, man. Oh, oh, fair. There it is. Now those pesky little clips. And you said the Stay other on one came side. off, right? The other one came off. This is the only one that you have to pull. And I use these push pin pliers because they seem to grip these fairly nice. Like it may seem wrong doing that because you're not supposed to do that with these, but it's just how they put them together. Seems like there's no other way, right? Not that I've found. Not that he's found. This guy's found a lot of stuff in his life. So now this is all loose. Make sure these headlight things don't get caught up. Yeah, don't let those sit inside of there. All right, now should be able to remove this hood. There's some regular clips here. So just use those blue clips. clips. Yep. Do the same for the other side. Then lift this up, pop that around here, and the whole thing comes right off. Wow. Now we can see all that plastic on the backside got right into that Barely radiator. Grooved her out and cut Holy it. Holy moly. So she got a little bend right here too. Yeah. That is unfortunate, but it could be a lot worse. Yeah. It could be a lot worse. A lot of times the fan shroud will break right here on an impact. This one's fine. The fan still spins. Mm -hmm. I think it still spins. I'm not taking all this stuff apart just to change the radiator. The unfortunate reality of owning an X3 means you have to do all of this, including relocating the radiator in order to do anything with replacing any of the control arms and they're all kind of all the arms are kind of locked together so you can't do one side without undoing the other side so we'll show you that in a minute mm -hmm. this will be a little bit different on your machine right because you have a different bumper ever so slightly oh the fan trout did break Matt, uh, son of a witch's so tail broke down here See that? Let me see if I can get closer to see that. So yeah. she actually, the yeah. that grommet should be in a hole. Yeah, that's a tough cookie. So she's flexing. But we can change that too. So anyway, two 10 millimeter bolts on the top, two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom, and then the radiator. If you're just doing your arms, you don't have to disconnect any electrical or hoses. You can just flip it up over on top of the cup. Yeah. Punchy cord. It's a pretty useful tool for working on X3s. Yep, so now that you have all these bolts out, you can you don't have to disconnect any of the hoses or electrical, and you can just lift this up, bungee it to your cage or your, in this case, your intrusion bars. There I got this. Probably should have grabbed that. Really sorry, but. We'll just do that. And so she's bungeed. Now you have access to these are bolts for the upper control arm. And then down here, they're studs for the lower control arms. So this whole bulkhead, even the stock one, has to come off in order to get any of the arms off. So we'll do that now. All right, so like I said, the these upper bolts are not studs, so you do have to get a wrench on the back side in between the diff and the frame, which is a little tough. There we go. And then that'll come right off. Move the wrench over to the other side. that. 
Again, these are just studs. So you could just zap, zap them off. And then your bulkhead comes off, sometimes. Wow. That's a lot of water That's in those water coming out of the lungs. <laughs> There she Wait. is, wide open, dude, ready to work on, huh? <laughs> now it's wide open. Now we're uh, about 10% of the way through, yeah. I think. So now it's time to get the wheels off, get all this other stuff disconnected. We'll see. <laughs> uh, the next step is to take the shock off the bottom mount and disconnect the sway bar link. And we do that because this lower ball joint with the suspension at full droop it won't come out of the knuckle. You can try and force it, but you probably end up ruining the hole in the knuckle. So we need to be able to lift this whole assembly up and then the ball joint just drops right out of mm -hmm. the knuckle. Okay, so now you can either tie this up or grab a buddy. I think I can do both at once. So you'll tie this up and then if you can point the camera down, there's a bolt with a 15 millimeter head and a nut that pinches the ball joint into the knuckle. So we got to remove that and then lift this up and it should drop right out now that the shaft of the ball joint is straight with the knuckle. We need you to become a bungee cord real quick. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> I need you to hold the shock up. No problem. Like this. Look at the yeah, look at, look like at the that. power. Dude. Then we can lift this up. Pull this bolt out, hopefully. And then ball joint. Slightly resisting. It comes halfway out, so you may need a little pry bar. We'll get that real quick. Get it in, bud. You gotta get yoked. Oh, yeah. No time for the gym. <laughs> I am the gym. <laughs> oh, dang. Boom, just like that. There it is. Boom, got him. All right. Finally, gotta take the rear nuts off for the lower control arm. And I say nuts because you see this plate? Mm hmm. You have to take the nut off of both sides and get that plate out in order to get just the one arm out. Man. <laughs> the cameraman is a Polaris guy, so he's not really it's crazy. dude. He doesn't understand this life. Now we can remove this little gusset plate here. And then if it weren't for these skid plates, you'd be able to just slide the arm forward and get it out. Okay. But, because of these skid plates, I'm gonna have to lift everything back up uh -huh. so that I can lift this up in a way. Also this bend in it. It's not helping any situation. Doesn't help at all. Do you think we could do this while camera's running? Maybe. Lift that up, lift that up, lift this up. Slide. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and help you. Okay. Sure. She's a little unhappy. These plates definitely don't help things too much. Because it's bent, we're probably going to have to cut it. Yes! Yeah! Okay. Ah! You just thick metal the heck out of that thing, bud. Wood blade. All right. That's so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, just cut them off. Worst case. Yeah, that's totally wow. tubular. Let's look inside of there. Is there any secrets? Oh, yeah. It's not. No. Just a weak point. I mean, it's better that that bent than that entire bulkhead. Exactly. You know. And I don't see any evidence of that. Nope. 
No weapons here. Cool. Here you go. I need I'm that sorry. I thought, I thought that afterwards. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> Well, it takes two to tango, Mike. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, unfortunately, we now have to not only fix Matt's car, we have to get look at mine, so. Mm-hmm, and we're thinking, upon further inspection, all four radius rods have been damaged. Yeah, those two have two giant curves and dents in them. This one actually has a big curve in it, and I was hoping that this one would be savable, but after checking it to other ones, it's also bent. Yeah. So we're going to change all those. That should be a real simple job. Um, kind of while we're doing this, I'd kind of like to show a couple people some of the things we've done when we buy these machines new as safety precautions for you guys to check and tighten up so you don't have problems down the road. So I'll show you a few of those as we're going. Yeah, all right, she's up in the air. Yeah, so the Pro R's are fairly simple on these ones and they're gonna be really quick change. So basically all you have is just four bolts total. Everything's got a bolt and nut set up on them. All four corners come out. Same down here, bolts and nuts slide out once the tires are off. Changes radius rods, super easy. It's not, the worst part is probably just finding the right spot to get a wrench in to hold the nut. It's a very quick, simple job. So we'll get that done real quick and move with that. So. Yep, and everything's 21 millimeter. Uh, one thing to know is when you buy these things brand new, you sh or even used, and you should periodically check, these bolts here, they tend to loosen up. So make sure those suckers are cranked down. Same thing with your toe link adjusters. Those are notorious for getting out of whack super easy even on light hits yeah you guys can see the blue marks where they're actually originally from the factory were tightened and not all of them tighten up a ton but we had a few of them that you know you get another eight to quarter turn on and that doesn't seem like a lot but i mean when you're doing them by your hands that's that's a big difference we've had them come loose before and egg a hole out so you don't want that yeah even with like i don't even know like 20 miles on them yeah so cool yeah. Did you do that, Justin? Uh, man, it looks like somebody ran into you, Mike. Thanks, Justin. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to say. I was like, yeah, I, no, I appreciate that. While we're talking about things to look out for on these, uh, Mike's got something in the front end that he wants to point out. Yeah, so when we bought these, uh, you guys can see obviously in the early year Pro R's, they were starting to have some ball joint problems and maybe people do and don't know this. So mine is a 23, which actually has an updated ball joint design in it. And we're gonna show you guys quick the difference. So you can see obviously the stem and the nut size are a lot bigger than what the old ones used to be. So this is an older 22 model year, so. Yeah, let's get this nut off of yeah, here. So you guys can really see you the difference. You can really see that the threads are a lot smaller than the actual shaft. Now, these new ones, the threads are way bigger. I don't remember the exact size, but they have a much less tendency to snap off on a hard impact. Right, so if you guys have a 22 and you ever had that problem or you're worried you might have that problem, that is a really good, quick little change to do is you can upgrade the ball joints to 23s and these hubs actually accept them as well. So I believe it's just changed the ball joint out it's got a different stem on it and you're good to go. Um, but check these two when they come out of the factory. Ours actually, we've checked all, like we go through the cars every time we get them and these are one of the things we found too that you can get like another eight to good quarter turn on those by hand to make sure they're tight. So just a safety thing, something to check. You don't want to whop a, whole, a knuckle out doing that because it comes loose, so. Yep, and we have confirmed the knuckles are the same part number uh, even on the newer ones. So you don't have to change the knuckle. Also the new, if you buy a whole new control arm, they come loaded with bushings and ball joints, which is something we hadn't seen prior to the Pro R coming yeah, out. Basically ready to go. I think the only thing you gotta do is put these inserts on the ends. No. That came with everything, they huh? They come with everything. I'm mistaken then, people. They basically <laughs> are ready to go, so. Yeah, yeah they're, it's pretty sweet the way, I mean, I'm sure they're not cheap yep. to get them that way, but they're uh, loaded right up. Yeah, all right, so I temporarily, temporarily lost my helper and uh, I went ahead and removed the radiator and so I've got my radiator and new fan shroud over here on the bench. You can get just the shroud from Can-Am. Uh, kind of saves you a little bit of money. 
if your fan is still intact and working, which this one is, I'm gonna assume it's working. Um, so it's just a matter of transferring the fan into the new shroud and bolting the new shroud onto the new radiator and putting her back in the car. So the arm is on. All we gotta do now is bolt the shock back on, get the bulkhead and stuff back on, and get the radiator in. But in the meantime, I just wanted to mention that you can get any of these OEM parts on Rocky Mountain ATV, especially if you use the link in the description. Yeah, it's just right there. It and, is right there. You know, for all these, I mean, they've probably got like a hundred of these radiators and fan shrouds and control arms just because it's such a common failure point oh, that's a good point. <laughs> especially if you hit your friends and uh are a cowboy and don't know how to drive or i don't know you know how to drive yeah i i don't drive extreme i don't know but... <laughs> i'm the one that doesn't know how to drive so anyway check it out together uh, we don't have the lights back on because I need to get parts to fix those and I decided on this front end I'm just gonna have to live with the consequences of my actions <laughs> for a little bit um, and then I'll eventually get you know the, a new piece of plastic but uh, the last step here is to top it off with coolant and what I do on these is I leave the upper radiator hose off while a lovely assistant helps fill it up <laughs> um, because these systems are pretty good at uh, bleeding out air, small air pockets, but whenever you replace the radiator on a Can-Am, it ends up having a giant airlock that you basically cannot get out. And it'll just constantly overheat and all that stuff. So Justin, go ahead and start filling her up for me. And I'll just and I'll just watch here until coolant starts pouring out of the top of the radiator and I'll just shove the hose back on and then you should be good to go keep her coming oh there it is go ahead and stop for a minute you can see that's pouring out so shove the hose back on without making too much of a mess and uh, there you go now all you gotta do is let her run until the fan kicks on, then let her cool back down, top her back off, and you're good to go. Yeah, well that worked really good. Huh? 
I mean, high vis, you gotta have it now. So we've had one incident. You might as well give them high visibility so we can see when some like me, who decides to stomp the brakes randomly, is coming to a halt. I should have put a chase bar on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we didn't see it. But Mike got his radius rods on. All we had in the shop were red. So well, yeah, those look familiar. I think it looks good. I, I don't know. I feel like I know where those came from. Do you? Yeah. From what? My car. They're mine. Or are they from the four seater? I don't know. Either way, I'm I'm happy that we had the parts to fix it, dude. Gee, I'm happy. I'm, that's more happy. <laughs> I no. feel a lot better now. <laughs> uh no, they were super easy to change. We just swapped them out real quick and uh, good to go. Alignment looks nice on it. Tires aren't having any issues, so uh, hopefully it'll be back to normal. Yeah. Stay with them water holes. Yep, my car. I mentioned before, still has some evidence of foul play, but the alignment's bad, all good. Uh, overall, not too bad of a fix. I hope you guys enjoyed following along while I repaired some of this damage, and uh, stick around for the next one. Sounds good, bud. Mm -hmm. See you around. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye, then. Bye-bye. Sayonara. Peace. See ya.